Art Loft is brought to you by... Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners, and the Friends of South Florida PBS. Art Loft, it's the pulse of what's happening in our own backyard, as well as a taste of the arts across the United States. Do you know how to make a peaceful road through human memory? And what of angry ghosts of history, then what? In this episode, paper comes to life with both the imagery of the written word and reimagined as sculpture, artist books, and collage. I can do anything, I think, with paper. They can't believe that they just dust this. If you touch it, I mean, it's solid. And then all of a sudden it becomes something else that expands it and moves and it gives you that, that idea of, of, of flexibility, of movement. And that's what I was trying to achieve when I made this, you know? It's, and not just the top, it goes all the way up to the bottom. Somehow I've been able to change the way that we perceive sculpture. It entertains, uh, it excites. Hi, my name is Felix Semper and I am an artist. My first paper sculpture I glued solid and I said, how am I gonna prove this paper? It took me about a year to kind of come up with the whole system. And once that happened, I first sculpture, just, I took it to New York and I went to Washington Square Park and just kind of messed around with people. Just, I just wanted to get people's feedback and reaction. It started going viral. Most of my stuff is, is recycled paper and I try to do that as much as I can. Uh, so what I do is I take sheets of paper, individual sheets of paper, glue them in stacks, and then I, I cut them to about the size that I think the sculpture is going to be, and then I start carving it. So all this process is, is eliminating paper. It's kind of like the original technique of sculpting, but in a different method. Uh, I'm using paper versus uh, you know stone or, or any other medium. But the fun part about it is that I paint it and give it the uh, the original look. So you really, a lot of times, you can't really tell if it's if paper of, of what we're talking about. I was invited to a to a dinner, you know, like a wine dinner. And then I brought this bottle with me. And you know, everybody brought their own bottle and stuff. And so I, you know, I walk in like that, I say, oh wow, you got a nice, nice French bottle right there. I say, yeah, it's Bordeaux, man. Here, let me, when I, this boy like that, they, <laughs> they were freaking out. They went crazy. Things that, that are, inspire me are things that are around me. I made a, a lace potato chip bags. And then Asa Brocky bought it. And then, you know, all these celebrities started talking. So it's just, it's just kind of exploded that way. So it involves painting, and it involves sculpture, and it involves performance art because I take these pieces and I go into the public, I open them and show them what, what it does, so it becomes a performance art. This is my new series. Uh, this is actually, I finished this not long ago. This is a flexible wood sculpture. So I said, I'm gonna make a wood that I can twist and turn, and it goes in any direction. And then, of course, he has a hat that is, is flexible. I went to a, to a place where it had like old junk stuff, and then this old TV was just sitting around there. When I saw the TV, it's from the 1950s, I said, I wonder how many people watch, you know, like, what was the most famous show back in the day, you know, the kids loved? So I was, you know, I do, did some research, and it was, you know, Howdy Doody. So I said, I bet I can put Howdy Doody in there in black and white, and I want to just kind of bring it, you kind of mix all kinds of mediums together. So I develop a motor and put it inside, and Howdy Doody comes up, remote control, and you know, he expands. So 
that's what this art does. It, it, it's, uh, it engages the viewer, not only to, to look, but to participate. You know, it just keeps evolving, and that's the, that's the beauty about this art. And I think it expands your mind, because you don't, you know, you're looking at an object that is solid, and, and it, all of a sudden this object does something else. I can do anything, I think, with paper. To see more of these surprising sculptures, visit FelixSemper.com. Next up, the possibilities of paper continue as Twin Cities Public Media shows us the complexities of collage. <laughs> Where's this paper from? This is just beautiful. This is a must. I like this one. That really looks three-dimensional. All right, let's keep going. This is good. My paper collection started actually about seven years ago in Sydney. The right paper can make or break a piece. Oh, I like that one. This one's beautiful. I'm going to start like a Dundee pile. <laughs> and then... <laughs> you know, it's really growing into something. I now have big paper, you know, printer drawers full of paper. I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm like... <laughs> Within my latest body of work, I've really tried to push the typical idea of collage as an art form. Crocodiles actually do feel kind of leathery and rough like this. Not, not that I felt too many crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest surprise people have when they see my work is realising that it's made from paper. Are you going to have to stop me from going over the top here? <laughs> When I was younger, I used to do a lot of jigsaw puzzles and spot the difference puzzles, trying to find hidden imagery in artwork, which was children's storybooks. I guess the way that I would describe my work, it is really a combination of multiple layers of imagery and papers. It's really trying to to gather a lot of stories and, and messages in one piece. My father is a native Minnesotan and my sisters and I were all raised in Sydney, Australia. There was a decade there that I worked side by side with my parents and we ran a, a very successful training business. But um, the artist in me was very much crying to get out and so I, I decided to leave that role to move to Minnesota and follow the dream, which was to become a, a full-time artist. This here is my latest studio find that I use for my large pieces of handmade papers. Sometimes I'll pick up a paper and it'll be in my drawer for, you know, six years. I won't know when I'm going to use it and then a perfect project will come along and I will be like, yep, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> I'm going to show you a few of my favourites though. Um, in here we've got um, my reds and oranges and, and this is one of my absolute favourites. This is a beautiful handmade paper from Japan. The reason I use papers, I, I found with paint, I could never really get the, the fine, beautiful lines that I wanted. And when, it was when I started working with papers, using a scalpel and a blade, I got these beautiful fine edges. I have almost an unlimited scope of what I can play with. Some more Indian papers and then some more beautiful papers used in my foliage and, and trees. I think the biggest step in my development as an artist was, was actually really moving into the Lower Town Lofts Artist Cooperative and being around other artists that I could get feedback from. And actually that's how I moved into collage. I decided to do some studies that were all in paper and I brought them into my studio and I brought in two of the ladies and I said, guys, what do you think? And they just looked at me and they said, you should be working in paper. The, the, you can do stuff with paper that I, you know, I can't even dream of. At the moment, I am working on two pieces. 
I really decided to look at who are two standout characters that tell a bit of a story of Australia. You know, Ned Kelly and, and the Crocodile Dundee. One talking about historical Australia and one talking about modern Australia. My series as well kind of developed very organically. For example, I had been working on my pin-up series, a subject matter I was very comfortable with and I have a background in fashion and, and theatre design, so the costuming element was great. I was showing at a few different fairs and I had a lot of people coming up to me and saying, oh, wow, you know, this is beautiful, but, you know, have you done Marilyn or have you done Audrey or Sophia? And so they were all of these fabulous women that they were hoping to see and it really got me thinking, that's a whole other area. So I went back and I decided to pick a Audrey Hepburn. And then I embed all of these other fabulous women that have done great stuff for girl power over the last century within that piece. And so that was really the beginning of this new style of work that I'm doing. I feel I'm creating something that's much more than the popular culture images. How I feel, I, I guess I'm really adding to the to the art world in my in my way, is by weaving in this fabric of papers and also this fabric of hidden imagery. I could maybe use the two of these, and then maybe use this. I think that could look pretty cool. I get this feeling sometimes when I'm driving. I've left the studio and I'm on my way somewhere, and it's almost like a, a tingle all over. And I can't tell you, it's the most unbelievable happy feeling in the world to think that I took a chance. You know, it's scary sometimes. Actually, it is scary, not just sometimes, but it is scary to put that kind of faith in yourself, to be able to make it work and to be able to now write, when I go back to Australia in the customs card, I am an artist. That is my occupation, it is a very, very cool thing. I pinch myself often, but um, I'm very happy. <laughs>
of higher institutions. But I think with um, you know the spoken word movement, it's been very powerful, and you know the poetry that's more oral poetry with song or music, it's it's all part. The origins of poetry are, are go, they always go back to music. It doesn't matter what culture or what they all go back to music. My name is Patricia Smith, and I am the Palm Beach Poetry Festival Poet at Large for the year 2020. I think it's important for conferences of this type festivals to move out into the communities that surround them. And what I will be doing is going out to some of the local high schools and firing the high schoolers up about poetry, or hoping to anyway. I think uh, there's also already a commitment and involvement with high schools here. And so I think we're going out and we're kind of bolstering that and letting the community know that we are not just a community of academic poets or performance poets, that everyone here is welcome. As if his cleaning little life is stuck on triumph. I got introduced to poetry by getting up on stage and doing it. And so it was always a creative conversation. It was very important, the energy with which the words reached the air. As if that's all anybody needs to know this day. And I think that's the thing that grabs students' attention almost immediately. Because they come into these rooms, they come into these situations thinking that they already know what poetry is going to be like. But I want everybody to, the first thing they say to be, I didn't know poetry could be like that. And it's breaking that fourth wall in a way, telling them a lot about uh, the genesis of the poem. Uh, it's important for them to know that poetry comes from very common, ordinary places. It is a very exciting time for poetry in South Florida. And it's a very exciting time for poetry right now. The poets are speaking from the heart. The poets are investigating things that they see in the world and they're writing about them in a way that no one else can write in prose. The Palm Beach Poetry Festival offers special events and workshops year round. Head to their website to find out more. Next up, we continue with poetry. Maryland Public Television takes us on a spoken word journey with poet Dora Malik. Love poem. If by truth you mean hand, then yes. I hold to be self-evident and hold you in the highest. K.O. to my O.T. and bait to my switch. I crown you one trick pony to my one horse town. I'm a poet not because I have all these amazing things to say or all these amazing insights, but because I turn to language to explore uncertainty. W, my one stop shopping, my space heater, juke joint, tourist trap. My I am somebody who is in love leader. with language and play within language, and sound, and rhythm, and rhyme. And for me, language itself could just carry me away like a flash flood. I could get completely uh, lost in the sounds, and the rhythms, and the rhymes that I love. And so for me, when I talk about pressure and putting pressure on that language, it's a pressure on myself to ask my own pleasure to cohere into something meaningful for a reader, and something meaningful for me. Tell me you'll dismember this night forever. You, my punch drunken bag, tar to my feather, more than the sum of our... My life without poetry might be simpler, but it would be a lot less exciting, a lot less surprising, a lot less fun for me. And there would be a lot less of a sense of attention to the world around me. If and, then but. If er, then uh. My fruit bat, my gugaw, you had me at no duh. As the book's demise is mourned and 
discussed, it seems that more and more people want to make books by hand. Artist books are their own art form, just like photography or sculpture or painting. My name is Amy Galpin and I'm the chief curator at the Frost Art Museum. I was thinking about books in terms of literature and how books can function as a portal, as a pathway to new experience, new travels. And I was thinking about this relationship that could be applied to an artist book. I think an artist book can be a sculpture. It can have text. It can look completely different than we might think a book should look, or it can have strong connections like the work of Margarita Cano with illuminated manuscripts, medieval manuscripts. I used to go a lot to, in New York to the uh, Morgan Library, so I was very familiar with books done with parchment and gold and gilt and all that. I started painting in 1993, just after I retired. The first thing I did was an Adam and Eve being told that they had to leave paradise. And the paradise was Cuba. And the tree, instead of an apple tree, it was mangoes. And I thought it made a statement for people to think about the sufferings of people who have to leave their country that accordion books, you know, that you open up, and then I have these little pieces inside, sort of like mirrors. So when a person grabs one of my books and starts opening and looking at it, all these things start falling to the floor, and it's very irritating. But that's part of what I wanted to cause. I wanted that to be an effect, because the Cuban situation is so irritating. Uh, some artists are very much dedicated to the form. I don't think that either Carol Todero or, for example, other artists in the show like Donna Ruff or Rosemary Charlone consider themselves to be only artist book makers, but they definitely make many artist books. I really enjoy experimenting with media and pushing the kind of media I can use with artist books. I think a lot about display when I make a book. I think about where it will be shown and how it will be seen. So this is a group of six artist books that work together as an ensemble. And um, it's called Villanelle. Um, the pages are made of a translucent material and the images and words are hand printed on in a very simple method of transferring um, text from an actual laser print. And a villanelle is a type of poetic form. It came from a French song form. Therefore, these books, which are a kind of analogy to the poetic form, are mounted on music stands. The music stands do two things. They provide a way for the books to be displayed as sculpture, and they also cue us that music is a part of the content of the piece. So the words are all fragments of poems. This one begins with the words, as if. So when you go down to the side, it says, forming a galaxy, and on the other side, becoming a graveyard. So I'm going from the cosmos to below the earth in this one segment of the poem. So it's not really a story, but more images and texts that the viewer is invited to put together and make their own meaning from. I think for, you know, most people think of Diego as a painter. He's someone who really interrogates what does a painting mean. But I was really taken with his elaborate sketchbooks, these deconstructions of other magazines joined with various drawings. And I thought he brought a really fresh perspective to the exhibition. For me, the artist's books came just as a way of necessity of just making and luckily I work in a lot of art institutions and what I decided to do was just incorporate a lot of the materials that was around me. They had a lot of catalogs that they were always throwing away. I didn't really think about it as like any different from painting. I just needed to make. Um, so during my break time I would be making it and even during the time when I was working I'd be walking around and if there was like an interesting page because of the material. I thought it would be interesting. I would just grab it and put it into these like artist books. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot from that. Um, and after I made the book, 
I felt like I couldn't make the same type of art again, um, what I was making in grad school. It just didn't make sense for me. I'm always thinking about that sense of awe that a viewer might have, but then simultaneously, what is the resonance? You know, what does the work uh, mean to them after they leave the museum? The Frost Art Museum at FIU offers free admission every day. Check out current exhibitions on their website. Continue the conversation online. Artloft is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Artloft SFL. Find full episodes and segments on a brand new website, artloftsfl.org, and on YouTube at South Florida PBS. Art Loft is brought to you by Where there is freedom, there is expression. The Florida Keys and Key West. The Miami-Dade County Tourist Development Council, the Miami-Dade County Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Cultural Affairs Council, the Miami-Dade County Mayor, and the Board of County Commissioners, and the Friends of South Florida PBS.